It's a lovely day today. We need a boat. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Absolutely, yes. To escape. What's your Okay, fine. <laughs> um, obviously, you've worked um, together before with the director. Um, were the two roles, um, was there a link between the past role and this role, and how has uh, the character developed within this sort of arc? I due ruoli di due film. Questo sì, è il secondo film che io faccio con Jacques, e mi sembra che Um, fra i due ruoli ci sia come dire, il legame di uno, di uno stesso itinerario nel senso che um, in fondo i due personaggi nel primo caso era un regista di teatro uh, e qui è un personaggio che diventa addirittura un clown sono due grandi secondo me riflessioni sulla figura di un artista su che cos'è un artista che cosa dovrebbe essere un artista e su che cosa dovrebbe diventare un artista. Un artista dovrebbe diventare qualcosa che non diventa mai qualcosa di definitivo. In, questo, in questa non completezza c'è, secondo me, il, il vero cammino che un artista dovrebbe compiere, perché un artista, c'era un, un, non so chi lo diceva, un, credo un filosofo, non mi ricordo, diceva una cosa bellissima, diceva un giardino finito è un giardino morto. Ecco, un giardino, un artista dovrebbe essere come un giardino, lavorato continuamente, potato, le foglie secche, i rami, ricuscito, gli innesti. Yes, this is the second film I have shot with Jack Rivet, and I believe that the two roles are connected by means of a common itinerary. The first character was the character of a director, while the, the second one is a clown. And it is a, a sort of a reflection on an artist, of what an artist is, of what he should be, and of what he should become. An artist an artist uh, should never be something definitive and uh, and this lack of completeness is the path that an artist should follow and uh, uh, I believe that it was a philosopher who had said that a finished garden is a dead garden. Mm -hmm. And this uh, metaphor also applies uh, to an artist. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, you should keep cultivating the garden uh, and uh, as an artist should keep developing. There's a line in the film where you say, um, my role is to move and uh, again, I think, develop, but also to maybe move the role of this character is to move the, um, the role of Kate, to move her on, to move. Um, tell me about the relationship between um, um, him and Kate. Nella prima scena del film già si capisce qual è il rapporto fra loro due, nel senso che la prima scena del film racconta una situazione molto realistica, in un certo senso, ma naturalmente enormemente simbolica, no? C'è una donna in difficoltà nella propria vita, una donna in panne, e sulla sua strada incontra un uomo che invece è in magnifico movimento, sembra essere, c'è una macchina rotta e una macchina funzionante e perfetta, c'è un personaggio rotto e un altro personaggio che sembra invece essere nel momento più, più dinamico della propria vita. In questo incontro ognuno di loro si accorge che avrà bisogno dell'altro e che quel personaggio, l'uomo che sembra essere certo, sicuro e vincente, e, come dire, dinamico e viaggiatore, in realtà eh, soffre di una grande solitudine, ha bisogno di un mondo dove entrare da, e dal quale essere accolto. 
Well, uh, the relationship uh, is clear since the beginning. The uh, first uh, situation we see in the movie is a realistic situation on one hand, but on the other hand, it is also a symbolic one. There is a woman who has, uh, in, uh, who is uh, experiencing uh, some difficulties, uh, and then uh, uh, there is a man, and she meets that man who is in magnificently moving, magnificently uh, traveling. And there is a broken car and a marvelous car and a broken character and then a character who is extremely dynamic in the most dynamic period of his own life. And after that meeting, they will understand that they need each other. And um, after that, the uh, most dynamic character of uh, the movie will also understand that he needs to enter that world in order to fill what is empty in his own life. Are these, um, uh, particularly the Kate um, locked in grief, shut down, she has to take um, a risk, uh, well, to, uh, not a risk, but is it to jolt her back into life uh, can you relate to that kind of situation where maybe you know you've you've shut down allora in, in questo film c'è un personaggio che eh, sta soffrendo molto che eh, si chiude in se stesso e che in un certo senso deve ritornare a lei ha mai avuto questa esperienza ah. nella vita di, essere, di chiudersi e di dover ritornare alla vita? Beh, per fortuna ho avuto... Eh, sicuramente ho avuto queste, questa sensazione, l'ho avuta come uomo, come artista, in alcuni casi della mia vita. Per fortuna non sono stati casi così mh, drammatici, così terribili, ecco, però insomma... Penso che mh, per naturale sensibilità, ma soprattutto per la, la, la funzione di un artista dovrebbe essere proprio quella di essere, come dire, in qualche modo senza pelle, e in qualche misura di sentire sulla propria pelle quello che forse gli altri non sentono immediatamente, no? Well, uh, of course, I had the same feelings, both uh, as a man and both as an, an, and as an artist. And, but uh, I was uh, also lucky enough not to, to make exactly the same experiences. Uh, and, uh, but I believe that the function of an artist is that of having no skin, uh, in a way, so that he or she can feel before and, uh, the others what the others cannot feel. I think that <laughs> thank you. I'm short. Thank you. Short. Short. Petite. <laughs> I don't see you as very petite. <laughs> thank you. How are you? Fine. I was um, just looking at the um, footage from the red carpet. Um, are we? Yeah, it looked amazing. Really? Yeah, and it was really nice to see. I think I like about Venice more than, say, Cannes, is that the interaction between um, the filmmakers and the actors with the audience, and they sign autographs. And yes, yes, yes. It's really g part of what and, a and festival you, and should you come be. And then you, you come back again and yeah. you go again. It's, yeah. a, it's a very straight, it's as if you're yeah. taking a curtain call. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> and giving aut autographs at the end. Yeah, yes. but I think it's um, really important that, I think, I think it's really charming and important that, you know, the fans and the audience here feel part of... It, it's wonderful and I didn't realise even that it was possible. I've done it in Cannes and shot off, yeah. but not wearing high heels like that, yeah. but, I, but <laughs> shoot off. And uh, Sergio showed me that, uh, he took my hand and, mm -hmm. and showed me that it was all right, because I thought, gosh, perhaps people are waiting and getting very cross. And uh, no, it's a part of the whole thing in Venice. Yeah. And it's very sweet and very, very touching to see that you're able to be with people. Yeah. And then it lasts for such a long time that Rivette, who is naturally someone who didn't like photographs or things like that, mm. was actually having a... Mm. 
a wonderful time. He's 83. Yeah. You wanted to celebrate this man and to, yeah. and so that he, to, to be in a place where you felt that he was so loved. Yeah. Then uh, it was very, very, very touching. It was lovely to see you all holding hands as well. Like yes. a real, there was a real sort of energy between you all and a love. Yes. And um, was it very much like that, making the film? It really was because Sergio and I just wanted to make Rivette's film and to make it as easy and as, as beautiful as he wanted. Mm. And uh, we'd both worked with him before. Sergio on, on a wonderful film I saw in Cannes with Jean Balibar. And I'd worked twice before, once with Piccoli, once with uh, Geraldine Chaplin. So we knew how he worked. We knew that he gave you the piece of paper the day before, or two hours before, or half an hour before. <laughs> we knew all that. So it's most unstressful, because you don't have to worry about the words until the day you've actually got to say them. And there, yeah. it could be a bit tricky, but uh, Rivette doesn't mind. He wants an accident. So yeah. he's very precise. He knows where he wants you to move and usually the moves are fairly complicated because yeah. he wants in one plan for him to change from here to there to ask a question there to go there it's it's like a sort of ballet of of, of people i love the thing i'm not in it but i love the thing where uh julie parmentier runs in and says says uh hide me and then another one says you did uh, uh, andre says that you didn't you haven't seen me yeah. and it, it's like marivaux <laughs> yeah. it, it's, it's beautifully done in fact it's a film by somebody who you feel that it's his nearly his first film yeah. and yet he's done so many so many so many mm -hmm. and uh and so the joy of being with him mm -hmm. and when he smiles and when he's really happy is when he's doing his film he doesn't smile in between times, not particularly, and uh, and he lived very with his wife, very, you know, quite far away, and so I've only seen him happy when he's actually watching the actors, and then you see him laughing and giving instructions of doing it a little bit differently the next time, giving you all the time necessary, and it's very it's very rare. You know that you're working with somebody who doesn't work like anybody else in mm. the world. I liked the, the way you described it as like almost like a dance of ballet, yeah. and you felt that within within the, the piece because it's it's simple in one sense but not in another. Yes. So it's beautifully worked, beautifully. The character Kate, um, we see her; she's trapped uh, emotionally, and it takes this sort of leap of faith almost to to bring her back. Um, is that, um, we, I spoke with um, Sergio very much about um, as an artist and, um, sorry, I'm digressing. Uh, let's talk about the first point, first of all, about the character, and then we'll talk about being an artist. But, you know, is, have you seen somebody who's shut down, like, in, in this situation before? Is it some, not necessarily that you've ha re had in your life, but how you could relate to that situation? I can relate to the fact of of missing somebody very much who's dead, mm -hmm. and the fact of um, sometimes wondering if if it could have been different, yeah. if you'd stayed with them, if you'd all the complications and the guilt of having left people, or it's much easier to be left than to leave somebody, mm. and so I. I I could understand that, of course. Everyone's been there. Mm -hmm. And the comfort, in a way, of, of... I didn't understand at the moment when we did the film. I did last night, when I said, I hate you. I thought, why does, why does she hate him when she's, he's just cured her? Mm -hmm. And then last night all became simple that, of course, you, you're so used to being in pain. You're so used to, mm -hmm. to wearing black that... Uh, that when you don't have that anymore and maybe you can start to live, then what are you going to do exactly? Yeah, it's challenging. Okay, wow, that went oh, quickly. Oh, no, no. <laughs> she, one, okay, <laughs> the, 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 the second bit. It was just about, um, what, as an artist, and, and working um, really sort of the freedoms that um, this allows you to express, but um, it's going to be too long, I tell you what. Um, if, 
instead you could there were so many metaphors that we were talking about in the film, like um, the car and it not being fixed. And uh, it was going to be a very long question, so I'm not sure that we can do it in one answer. But just really as an artist, what, was, what did it do for you to work in this film then? I didn't want to make any more movies. Mm. He rang me up and he asked me to be in his movie. I can't say no to Rivet. <laughs> it was too attractive. Yeah. It was to know that you could be doing that voyage again with him, not knowing what was going to happen to the person. It's, it's such an adventure. Mm. And to be with Sergio, it was impossible to say no. So he gave me the, the desire to do films again. Wow. It was after nearly 10 years. That's wow. not bad. Wow. That's great. <laughs> no, and I'm glad he did. I'm so glad. Thank 